so my, my presentation is uh, entitled The Show Must Go Online, Shifting Modalities for Theater Performance Classes. Um, I uh, am I'm going to be reliant on my experience as a um, musical theater professional um, uh, as well here. Um, but so I'll be talking about that in just a second. Um, since guidelines for quarantine and self-isolation began across the United States and around the world in early March 2020, most of the locations where theater can be created have become literal empty spaces. Um, the theatrical industry and those of us teaching those necessary skills for it have been asked to reconsider the practical, technological, and ethical quandaries of an art form that in its very definition violates the rules of self-isolation. So due to the threat of COVID-19, colleges and universities like Iowa State University face decisions about how to continue teaching and learning while keeping their faculty, staff, and students safe from a public health emergency that was moving fast and was not well understood. Many institutions like Iowa State University opted to cancel all face-to-face -face classes, including labs and other learning experiences, including a production of 9 to 5, the musical that I was directing at the time. And they mandated that faculty move their courses online to help prevent the spread of the virus that causes COVID-19. Moving instruction online can enable flexibility of teaching and learning anywhere, anytime, but the speed with which this mood to online instruction was expected was unprecedented and staggering. Um, during the time of emergency remote teaching that ensued, um, which is very different than supported online or hybrid teaching, faculty like myself uh, felt like instructional MacGyvers, um, having to improvise quick solutions in less than ideal circumstances. And very often I thought about the law of the instrument, um, which is uh, Abraham Maslow's idea that um, I suppose it's tempting if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. And based on the many conversations that I had with many of the nails, which were my students, the tools that most faculty deployed were merely a variety of hammers. So inspired by the need for flexibility, student agency, and autonomy in online courses during the early months of the pandemic, the Department of Music and Theater at Iowa State University pulled from a, a different tool from our toolboxes, uh, the class menu, uh, to be able to uh, utilize in several of our different courses, um, everything from history of the theater to acting fundamentals, to even musical theater auditions and performance, pulling all of those online. Now, class menus are, uh, are, are rooted in the pedagogical strategy of differentiated instruction. For those of you that don't, may, may not be familiar with it, differentiated instruction addresses differences in student preparation, interests, and strengths by offering a variety of learning pathways within the same classroom that differ in terms of content, focus, activities, or outcome. So class menus are an approach within differentiated instruction in which relevant outcome-based assignments are used to evaluate student progress in the course, emphasizing flexible ways to demonstrate achievement through personal choice and autonomy. Now, differentiated instruction is widely used in primary and secondary education here in the United States, and it's garnered an unfortunate reputation for sometimes being a bit reductive. However, in his article, Differentiated Instruction in the College Classroom, Stephen Mintz, who's the founding director of the University of Texas Systems Institute for Transformational Learning, noted that one concept for higher education, that, that, that higher education should borrow for, for K-12 educators is differentiated instruction. He suggests that as higher education moves toward a greater acceptance of hybrid modes of delivery and personalization of pace, the in-class portions of courses will inevitably include students with varying levels of fluency with most recent material. And this is something that we saw as we started porting things online, that there was a, there was a variety in terms of that, that fluency of being able to, to handle material. While ISU's Department of Music and Theater is not a conservatory-based program, there are a host of intensive practice-based courses that prepare students to enter the profession, which in itself is a very personal and specific journey. So the fundamental idea that drives class menus as a pedagogical tool is the prioritization of choice, which motivates students, allows for differentiation in learning styles, offers different ways to arrive at and demonstrate achievement. Outcomes might be performative, um, reflective, creative, pedagogical, professional, which were then all posited within the menu through a variety of written, verbal, tactile, visual, oral, and creative components. Each weighted for points based upon the suggested amount of time it might take to complete and the number of course outcomes to which it applied. Each assignment was accompanied by a set of instructions that crystallized its purpose, specific steps that provide structure before students engage with the assignment, and grading criteria to demonstrate what it means to successfully complete each assignment. Students then choose activities from the list of eligible tasks with the expectation that they would obtain a predetermined number of threshold points in order to complete the menu. 
And the menu this way offers multiple optimal paths for students to reach or exceed these milestones, um, emphasizing depth of understanding or proficiency with a particular skill. In a moment of great limitation last spring, this methodology particularly gave students a much needed sense of control over something in their lives. So the range of assignments that I deployed in my particular class, which I'll, I'll um, outline here in just a moment, offer, um, encouraged thought, skill, productive participation in the course work, and then some collaboration. None of the assignments were conceived to be really hard or easy, nor were students penalized on the basis of pace. So students who completed the menu faster were not considered more advanced um, than slower uh, paced students uh, were not considered slow in a pejorative sense. Given the issues of accessibility and equity as students returned to their homes across the country and around the world, the emergency remote teaching uh, style allowed for me and my students to exercise a little bit of humanity too. Um, this methodology ultimately encouraged our students to think for themselves, plan and reflect on their learning progress. Um, they uh, uh, strategize multiple plastic, uh, paths to completion um, and, uh, and then just really be able to just have it hearken to whatever was happening in their particular lives at any particular moment through the rest of the semester. So as a course uh, for today's, um, as I mentioned, no assignment was hard or easy. There was no penalization and there are multiple pathways to hit this point threshold, which I'll, I'll um, talk about here in just a minute. So as a case study for today's discussion, um, I reflect, I'm reflecting on perhaps the most difficult class to transition online last spring, which was musical theater performance and auditions. Theater 355 at Iowa State University is, um, is a studio class for up to 18 students, which asks performers to learn and apply musical theater performance techniques in a high impact face-to-face -face studio setting, which culminates in a final public cabaret performance. So perfectly timed for uh, the midst of a raging pandemic. So in addition to uh, honing performance skills, a key component of the class is also preparation for the students to, to transition into the professional theatrical world. Um, they, um, it manifests itself in uh, several different classroom contexts. There's the creation and organization of professional materials, networking with professional theater artists, and then public performance for their peers. So in March 2020, when uh, advice started to come from the Center of Disease Control and professional uh, groups like the National Association for Teachers of Singing that began urging performers, choirs, musical groups to not gather again to sing in person until further notice, it quickly became clear that the means by which the coaching and audition segments of the course that I taught were, were going to need short term and perhaps even long term change. So with synchronous sessions largely unworkable, because have you ever tried to synchronize a piano player and a singer and a coach over Zoom? You know that it's a, it's a, it's a real hot mess there. Um, there was, um, I recalibrated the focus of the class to try and work remotely via this, this course menu. So via the menu, um, we emphasized those three goals, which were creating professional materials, uh, networking with professional theater makers, and performing publicly, if virtually, for our peers in some in some controlled settings. But I also found that it was really important to add in an unspoken fourth component, which was trying to find a way to create some sort of cohesive sense of community that prioritized and celebrated health and well-being during the pandemic, because there were a lot of demands that were coming down on the students and and not really allowing for that space for humanity. So when um, we're looking at the um, uh, the, the class menu. So um, I uh, had an image earlier where it was organized in Canvas, which was our, our, our learning sit, uh, system here. This is a basic rundown of a, a readjusted syllabus that I had. Um, and it was, um, I, I tried to really, really prioritize them being able to engage with the material rather than trying to way find around the, the um, course learning schedule. But you can see here that I denoted different points for each sort of thing. It could be as simple as posting an idea for a vocal or a physical warm up in our Canvas discussion board, um, where they could they could earn a limited number of points for that. Um, if they tried out one that was uh, uh, suggested by a, a, a and classmate and then posted about that they could also then earn points from that um, if they filmed them if they felt comfortable filming themselves doing said uh, warm up they could post that and and show the results um, I also uh, in that in that attempt to really prioritize health and well-being um, I created a quarantine wellness plan where they um, it was on the honor system uh, as to if they did any one of these following things if they did two of those a week and integrated those into their daily or weekly practice they could earn points that way just by taking care of themselves um, 
there are, you can see that it starts to get a little bit more um, specific into professional material preparation uh, of uh, theatrical resume, um, uh, researching cabaret performers in a major market, reaching out to musical theater uh, uh, performers or writers or um, other theater makers and talking to them about uh, what, how they were spending their time during the quarantine. Um, as well as then uh, getting into even more specific uh, uh, performative types of things where uh, I asked them to write quarantine based uh, parody lyrics for an existing musical theater song, um, film themselves uh, performing that parody PSA with their own lyrics or somebody else's or trying to complete a virtual duet. We were working on duets in class um, the moment that we were uh, sent into quarantine. And so if they wanted to work together or film themselves with uh, of a family member or even an inanimate object, uh, they, they, could, they could film those and share those with the class in, in a way. And I'll, I'll share the result of that in just a moment. So to, to, to receive a satisfactory grade, the students just needed to accumulate 250 points from this. Um, and they could, uh, they could do that. There was, um, a, 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 they could certainly, if they felt more comfortable writing and um, engaging um, asynchronously with things, they could do that. But there, it was sort of gradiated to um, the more present they were, the more that uh, they contributed to the discussions, the more that they were sort of um, engaged with that sense of community, those points would rack up a little bit easier. Um, not only did students appreciate the different routes in which they could arrive at success, but they also were able to capitalize on their um, strengths in doing so and the opportunities to reflect about their own learning um, uh, also then yielded multiple benefits there. Um, a few thoughts from students. Um, one of them said, I thought the class menu idea was very helpful and allowed me to work on this class every week, engaging with the class community, dedicating time to learning and vocal practice without feeling too much stress or pressure. So achievement of that, that fourth unspoken goal right there. Another student said the class menu was a good fit for the way this class worked. I liked all the assignments I chose because I felt they felt suited to what I wanted to learn and improve on as a performer. I also loved the weekly check-ins. It made me still feel connected to the class as, as well as the professor. And then finally, these assignments encouraged me not only to stay informed about the class, but to make sure I was taking care of myself and that I would have something to share. Um, Kaysen allowed us a lot of freedom to choose what kind of assignments we wanted to do in order to get points, which I found to be helpful. I also think he did an outstanding job ensuring we all were okay and focusing on our own health during this time while giving us work to do that was beneficial and kept us engaged in the class. So you can see that like all four of those, um, those uh, course outcomes that I was hoping for in readjusting the class were present in each one of those reflections. Finally, the menu unleashed student creativity. As I was reinventing my teaching during the shift to remote teaching, my students were reinventing themselves, their learning and their understanding of what it means to be a performer and enter the professional theatrical world. And I'm gonna share with you a, um, a, a video from uh, one of my students who wrote and then filmed himself with this parody PSA lyrics here. This is a takeoff of um, You Got Trouble from the uh, popular musical, The Music Man, um, uh, recalibrated to be uh, entitled You Got COVID. So let me see if I can get um, this pulled up here. Oh no, let me see. Maybe if I pull it out, sometimes it gets a little, here we go. Um, and Calvin um, was, was very happy to have this shared with you. So I'll hop here to some of the really fun lyrics. So this is, he rewrote this and then performed it. And I call that gross. The first big step on the road to the depths of pandemic. I say first, an oversized half in a group, then a sneeze in a store. And the next thing you know, this virus goes spread and fashioning some butter on toast. And passing it on to some of the most at risk, seeing them all not keeping their distance. Not a six foot apart gap, no, but a gap where they get up right in your grill. Like to see some stuck up college boy coughing near your grandma. Make your blood boil? Well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six cases of COVID, cases that mark the difference between the common cold and a plague when the capital beats so quarantine and just stay at home. And all week long, your story counting. And so, I mean, it continues on. He, he did the, uh, the entire song, which ranged about, it was about five minutes long there. Um, so the last thing is uh, just to kind of reflect on, um, this obviously was really helpful during um, our, 
emergency remote teaching period of time um, in this particular class in which I um, uh, deployed it. But um, we found some other ways in the department to utilize it during our online and hybrid teaching the past two semesters, um, th this past academic year. Um, and it's, it's, it's been deployed across our department's 100 to 400 level offerings. The most important principle underlying differentiated instruction is the recognition that instructors aren't simply content area specialists or evaluators of student work, but rather designers of educational experiences. I know we've been talking a lot about sort of the presence of the um, instructor and the personality of the instructor being present in some of these online spaces so that they don't just become, again, a, a box in which students kind of log in and log out of. As learning designers, instructors must specify what they want a student to know, to be able to do, and then design activities that will help the students attain that objective and devise assessments to measure whether the students have actually achieved that mastery. And this is one of the really great things that differentiated instruction um, does. Now, the menu is not it is not for all classes. I, it worked really well in this 18 person studio based class. It would not necessarily be the most effective way for me to deal with my 300 plus lecture um, introductory um, lecture class. It's best deployed sort of in an asynchronous context with small enrollment courses, not as the only form of class completion as a, as a colleague of mine found um, in, in the fall, but instead as an option to augment other optional uh, assignments or class concepts. Another useful way the class menu has been utilized is a mean for students who have tested positive for COVID-19 or have to be outside of the classroom for um, an, a, a, a two week period um, uh, to still be able to successfully complete those class objectives. Now, while nothing can replace live theater until vaccines are more widely distributed and students begin feeling comfortable filling those empty spaces, um, I hope that this has given a little bit of insight to the impact of class menus and how they might be a new tool to add to your toolbox alongside all of the hammers. Thank you.